The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's three o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon. Uh, it must be time for another Who You and SBC webinar. Um, so uh, welcome today. Uh, we'll get started in a minute. We're just going to pause for, for 60 seconds to allow for any, any stragglers, any people that are having woes with their... Uh, with, with their technical issues. Um, so we will be back ready to go in 60 seconds. Right then, well, uh, let's get started. Um, good afternoon, my name is David Pope. I'm the marketing director over at here at Who You. Um, and today we're gonna to share with you uh, the results of some research we did by interviewing gaming operators to understand the dropout rates they experience uh, during uh, the sign up processes and during KYC. So uh, first of all, uh, let me do some introductions. Uh, we're joined today uh, by an elite team uh, from SBC and Who You. Uh, we have um, we have Victoria Royce, uh, who's our head of account management. We have um, Darnam Nasigadu, who's our content content marketing manager and a bit of a uh, legend when it comes to money laundering or at least anti money laundering. Uh, and last but not least, we have uh, Andy McCarran, uh, managing director of, um, of 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 SBC. So uh, welcome to, to today's webinars, guys. Thank you very much for for, for joining us. Okay. It's a, yep, so it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks a lot, David. Um, interested in uh, what, we're, what we're going to be talking about today. Yeah. Um, and apologies, there's no webcam for us today. Um, my fault with the uh, with the setting. I, I gather you've actually put on um, a shirt and a, and, a, and, a, and a sports jacket for us. Well, you know, I've uh, I've, I've got to keep appearances up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going, I'm not wearing anything else. It's just a shirt and the and the jacket really. Just, just pajamas on the bottom. I, I, I like exactly. to think. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. Well, um, so today we're going to look at the research. We're going to um, look at what percentage of online gambling sign-up processes pass KYC. Um, so you can benchmark where, where you're at as an operator. Um, we'll even throw in a bit of um, analysis about what we see from our clients um, in other sectors. Um, then we'll look at how long it takes um, KYC processes to complete before the customer uh, can, can, can get in and wager. Um, and lastly, we'll look at some of the pain points. Where exactly in the KYC process do um, do operators experience dropout? Uh, we're keen to have your questions, so please do throw them at us via the the um, your your go to webinar panel, um, and we'll take questions at the end. Uh, and of course, this white paper you can download, uh, this report you can download from the WHOU website um, to get these statistics for yourself. Um, well, well um, let, let, let's get started. So um, what we did is we interviewed um, a representative um, sample of online gambling operators uh, that face the UK market and non-UK markets. Um, and we made sure that there was a good spread of small, medium and large operators um, uh, between them all. And the first question we asked is, look, you know, hey, what percentage of your signups um, get past KYC? What, what percentage get over the KYC finishing line? Um, so overall, um, the average was was eighty six percent, which doesn't sound bad. Uh, I mean, it still means that fourteen percent is being lost in the funnel. Um, but if I give you a comparator with um, with other surveys we've done uh, in other industries uh, where, where where he works um, in the retail banking sector, uh, when we last did um, the research, the um, the the success rate there was nearly 60%. So on, so for uh, traditional retail banking uh, via digital channels, the, the abandonment rate is much, much worse, near, near, near 40%. Um, 
Um, and then towards the end of last year, we did a study with fintechs um, and e-money e -money issuers. And the success rate there was 74%, so losing 26% in, in, in the funnel. So um, pat on the back to, uh, to to the gaming industry. I think gaming, operat gaming operators, adult industry has always led the way in terms of um, new technologies and creating new experiences. So it doesn't surprise me to see the gambling sector up there um, in terms of having the lowest dropout rates. Um, and also, I think that's probably a, a factor of um, the fact that uh, KYC at gaming um, sign up is mainly an age verification process um, as opposed to something that's a fuller AML KYC process for financially regulated um, sectors. Um, so, course, so if, Dave, sorry, sorry on, to interrupt you. I mean, would, would that mean is, is gambling really leading the way amongst all the, all the other industries then that, um, uh, that have this kind of sign up process? Is is it is it more of a case of you know they've they've been uh, in the space for twenty years now and and know what works? Uh, yeah, and I think that um, because the sector came under such intense regulatory scrutiny um, early on, um, and again in the last few years since the Gambling Commission tightened the, the KYC procedures, um, it, it forced everyone to relook um, at how they were doing KYC. Um, and how to create that smooth journey for their users and not just to uh, be asking their users to, to tick a box uh, in, in, in a KYC process. So, um, so yeah, I think that uh, the, yeah, in my mind, yeah, if you look at the, the data, um, the gaming sector, uh, the gaming industry does lead the way in, in terms of the success of, um, of sign-up processes at the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, the, the question is, you know, how do, um, of course, in the UK, operators are blessed with, uh, with data uh, to be able to do an initial age verification process. Then if the data fails, then they can, they can go through a, an ID document um, process. Um, one of the things that we frequently see um, operators failing to do is to join those two processes up. Um, and quite sometimes we get asked you know, by our clients, how can we get the best possible success rates? Um, and that really is by putting a bit of logic between the database check steps and then the document validation steps. Um, what we mean by that is that if the database check um, gives a partial result, um, then in that case, um, all, the, um, all the customer needs to do is provide an ID document so they can prove name and date of birth. Um, but if there's no match whatsoever, then that customer might have to go through a fuller process uh, to provide an ID document and an address document. So in other words, you're not asking users to perform unnecessary KYC steps. You use the logic of the database results to then inform the dynamic um, uh, KYC steps that, that come after. So it sounds like a small thing, um, but we see um, a lot of customers failing to, a lot of clients actually failing to, to implement that kind of sequential flow. Sorry, David, uh, I don't want to come in again and, and keep interrupting you in no, the no, middle no, of your go, flow. Go, 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 but, go, jump in whenever you want. So, so where, where, where is the gap between sort of the smaller and the medium operators and the larger operators within this process? Where, where do these, the smaller and medium operators need to put a bit more sort of emphasis on to, get, to catch up to that 92% figure? Okay, so um, so obviously the thing that leaps out from this graph is that the large is that size matters, right? Um, yeah. The larger operators um, have got a better um, a better success rate in KYC. Now that kind of makes sense. Uh, you have more people that obsess more um, about the onboarding flow. You have more agents to cope with people that might drop out of the process. Um, you have uh, more budget to employ a, a wider range uh, of, of KYC vendors. Um, but you know, uh, to make to kind of like a, make it even and 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 make it a level playing field, um, smaller operators um, they need to seek out a KYC vendor that's going to give them the journey um, for the user to go through a nice smooth digital journey and not just the KYC tools and then they can kind of start to compete uh, with, with with the bigger boys as well. Um, and we can share some more details of that, of that journey, how to create that smooth digital journey, um, slightly later on uh, in the presentation today. Okay, so, um, so then we also looked at sign-up rates outside of the UK. 
Um, Dana, would you like to, to, to talk us through this one? Yeah, yeah, sure. Sorry, it took a second to unmute myself there. <laughs> so, so yeah, there's um, this one's quite interesting, right? Like, there is a drastic difference between the KYC sign up average success rate that we're seeing outside of the UK compared to inside of the UK. And again, um, the large operators are you know steaming ahead at 75%, but still a significant drop down from from their UK success rates. I think, you know, one one of the reasons for that is, you know, like it says, there are far fewer reliable database sources outside the UK. UK database um, data, for lack of a better word, is head and shoulders above what's available in other parts of the world. And you know, when when you have a small operator, you might not necessarily have your local teams in those in those markets. So you might have a UK centralized team. That is trying to deal with the complexity of local markets, which can have, you know, a real slowing effect on the onboarding process. So, you know, we need to ask how companies can make up for the data difference between the UK and non-UK journeys. Part of this is, um, you know, re-communicating to your customers, you know, why you need to harvest more information from them in the first place, and really, um, really making them understand that you need this data to achieve their sign-ons properly and educating them uh, on the reasoning why. Uh, some of them will probably still self-select out the process at this stage, but at least you'll be meeting them halfway. And then on top of that, there's also uh, the power of localization, right? So having one of the things where large operators really manage to succeed here is they have their local teams on the ground, which can make incremental changes and you know, really finesse the the efficiency of of the onboarding process over time. Whereas if you have a small team and you've only your your focus on multiple different markets, uh, you might not be able to give them the same amount of attention that you want. So that's that's also another barrier. I mean, just just out of curiosity, is there, are there any particular markets? Um, obviously, we've got non UK, um, and a lot of it is dependent on. Um, the documents that people use in certain markets and um, uh, and you know how widespread the use are and how easy it is to verify those 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 things are, are there any particular markets that um, that is easier than the than the other some of the other um, European markets is there any that stand out is higher than 70 percent um, or or are they all round about the same kind of level so, so the, the Scandi markets uh, are uh, are easy to work in. The speed with which operators can sign up their customers in the Scandi markets, where they have a, a bank ID um, style way to, uh, to to digital identity style way to to to, to prove their identity, and um, that sees really high match rates and sees a low turnaround time for for, for KYC. Um, and then the next best markets are those where um, the operators can use data in isolation or data uh, before docs. So that would be uh, the UK, uh, that would be, be, be the Netherlands and Germany. But of course, then each country has its own specific uh, regulations. So the KJM, the Age Verification Regulator in Germany, um, they stipulate that data alone isn't sufficient for the creation of, um, of, of um, an account that offers adult services. And there they do ask for a liveness detection and a, and a document validation process as well, as well. So then it also varies by the regulations um, in, 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 in each country. We've um, done a lot of work with German clients th th this year, actually. So here's, um, to Dana's point earlier, um, here's a screenshot of the Who You Journey, um, uh, one of the screens in, in, in German. And so yeah, in terms of getting the best possible success rate for, for, for non-UK markets, you've got to make it easy for your users, you've got to make it easy for your customers, Sure, um, all your um, all the operators' um, uh, deposit and betting pages are in local language, but you've then got to make sure your KYC um, partner can instantly show the KYC journey in those in the in the in the in those languages. Um, and again, you know, when you're asking users to do something they might not have done before, or something that they have yeah they have to understand what they have to do and how they have to do it, it just makes it easier when it's in 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 in, the, in, in their language. What happens with um uh, with the Who You journey, is it automatically sniffs what the um, settings are on the user's device, and then will render it in 
like Polish or Lithuanian or French or, or German or whatever. Um, uh, Tori, um, uh, how, many, how many languages are, you, does who you have behind it now for the journey? Good question, Dave. Um, as I currently sit here, uh, we've got around 25, um, but we are adding to that um, month, month to month. So it's it's really driven by by our client base. Um, we get requests all the time as new markets evolve and pop up. Um, so yeah, ever, ever growing. Um, most recent one was Japan, actually. Just ah, point very good, very good. Um, and of course, it's not just about the, the the language that the UI is served in, but it's also about knowing which document you should ask the user for. Um, so, for example, in Germany, the driving license is not permissible source for age verification, whereas the ID card um, is, and it all centres um, around the ID card. Um, in Portugal, for example, um, or Brazil, passports are kept locked in a safe all year round until the user's ready to go on holiday. That's really what they're only used for. Um, it's, it, it's an ID card in those countries. So it, it's all about uh, specifying which document the user's going to have to hand based on which country um, they're in as well. Whereas in the UK, of course, um, driving license is, is, is perfectly fine. Um, OK, so um, let's, do, let's do a quick poll now. Um, to break break things up. Um, if you bear with me for one second, I'm just going to press a few buttons on my end and a poll will appear on everyone's screen. If you could please answer it, you can give um, our esteemed panel today some interesting uh, data to debate. So how do you plan to uh, increase spend in the next 12 months? So if people could please vote um, on that, give us some interesting uh, interesting discussion points for today. I feel like we should have the countdown music. <laughs> I was looking the other day for a Bob Monkhouse impersonator for a, for, um, for, a, for, a, for a digital gaming event I'm uh, thinking of putting on. But anyway, that's uh, that's that's giving, giving it all, all away. OK, great. We've had a, had a bunch of votes in. Uh, let me uh, close the poll and share the results to the screen. So this is uh, what, what we'd hope to see. This is what we'd expected to see. Um, even a few years ago, actually, it would have been the other way around. People would have been putting more more money above the line and more mon money uh, into the top of the funnel, um, as opposed to using tech to squeeze more out of the funnels. This is what we're seeing here. The majority of, of, um, of, of operators are going to use tech to squeeze more out of their sign up funnel, uh, whereas um, less are throwing money in at the top of the funnel with, 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 with PPC. But anyway, guys, your, your thoughts on this? <clears throat> Well, the question, the question I want to ask is, I mean, uh, is is this is this um, an example of it, it getting a lot more competitive in sort of on the marketing side of things, and certainly a lot more expensive, and uh, people are, are now looking rather than um, their player acquisition, um, rather than the marketing side of things, it, it, it's keeping hold of the people that that, that they get with that marketing. Um, so I'm, assu I'm assuming that you, you'll have to tell me this that the the customer sign up funnel is is probably improving on on that is probably the, the best um, sort of spend for ROI. Uh, yeah, it's the it's, it's, it's the best bang bang for buck because it's um it's about getting more customers out of the the, the ad spend, marketing spend, the PPC spend uh, near the affiliate margin uh, that you know, that you already already committed to. The, the, the you already, already spent. So yeah, so that's good. Uh, well done, everyone's passed. I was going to say, that, gone done. I was going to say it makes a ton of sense to me as well, anyway, because PPC spend is starting to feel a lot like uh, the early dot com bubble with banner ads, and I think there's never like you're never going to lose out by improving your basic fundamentals of your site, right? And what we're seeing happening in the past, what, five, 10 years anyway, is this really huge expansion across the digital economy as well. So, you know, there, there have been massive tech improvements around how you could have your funnel improve as well. Um, so the more people that are, the more focused on that, the better it's gonna be. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I, I agree, the less attrition, the better. And I think it's looking at, you know, what is within your control 
um, well, of course, you know, new new markets, new games um, is is great, but or are great, but absolutely, it's keeping keeping hold of, of of those players. And if there are key attrition points, um, you know, overlooking those wouldn't make sense. Um, so yeah, it's trying trying to figure out what they are and, and how to combat. That. I mean, I mean, touching on what Tori's just said there, and something that I noticed in the in the um, in the research doc earlier, add some of the figures that you've been showing before. How how realistic? How close can we get to a hundred percent when it comes to to um, making sure we we keep we keep the customers that we've attracted into the process? I mean, was it ninety two percent for the for the larger operators in the UK? How how realistic? How much? How much can we get that to a hundred compared yeah. to from so where we are now? I, th I think I think that's a good question. I think it's uh, it's probably a pipe dream to get it get it to a hundred. Um, you're always going to have some people who abandon because they they change their mind about bet. So let's say it's sports betting, and they they change their mind about near you know, the fact that 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 Liverpool won't beat Man United or or, or so on and so forth. Um, and then some people might think, actually, no, can't afford it. Um, some people might get distracted. Some people might think, oh, do you know what? Yeah, I don't like the look of this new site. I'm just going to go back and use my, access, my existing Bet365 accounts. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's a whole host of reasons that are really outside of the control of the operator and the control of, 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 of the KYC vendor um, as to uh, what, how many percentage points that is. I, I, it's, it's really hard to put to put a number on that. Wouldn't 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 because it, it's guessing really. Mm. Okay. Um, okay. So let's go to uh, the next slide. Uh, right. So uh, we looked at um, uh, how long it takes the KYC processes to, to complete in the UK. Um, Darnham, do you want to uh, go through this one for us? Or shall I do this one? You do the next one. I'll, I'll do this one. You, you, you do the next one. Um, so this is how long it takes um, the operator to, uh, to perform KYC, but only when the database check has failed um, in, 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 in the UK. Now, based on our SLAs, uh, that feels like quite a long time uh, for KYC um, to, to, to be performed. Um, assuming, of course, that once database check fails, it's a seamless process, jumping from one screen to another uh, in, 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 in a sub-second process to say, hey, Mr. Customer, now we need you to provide um, an ID doc or a selfie and, and, and an ID doc. Um, shouldn't be 11 minutes, should be, um, should, 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 should be shorter than that. But the interesting stat to come out of this one is that um, the, um, uh, the smaller operators, of course, they're still taking um, much longer. Than the larger operators, but the medium operators here um, are starting to come into their own. The ones that are perhaps a little bit more agile, um, the ones that don't have quite so much uh, process um, uh, getting in the way. Um, so they're the ones that um, uh, that are investing in the right KYC supplies. They're the ones that are hungry to grow and break into the, into the league of, of, of the bigger operators. So I found I found that one quite interesting actually. Is that because sort of larger operators are trying to bring stuff more? They've got more in-house stuff or um, or is it, is it like you say, there's just a few more processes and they're going to be, um, uh, the process has got to be a lot more robust for them. So I think, there's more jumping through hoops. Yeah, I think there's probably a bit more process. I think probably the larger operators are bringing some affordability elements uh, into the initial KYC calculation, perhaps, which take, 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 takes them longer. Um, but it, yeah, it's good, good to see that, that the medium sized operators can, um, can, can change the game a little bit there. Um, again, they're outside of the UK, slightly different picture. Um, Dana, over to you to, to talk us through this one. Yeah, sure. So this was one of the ones which I found personally when we were doing the research, I thought it was quite quite bizarre, right? Um, considering how fast the UK is, the fact that when you're when you, you move out of the UK, you're immediately moving up to 30 to 60 minutes for KYC or half a day or over a day, which which to your point earlier for like sports betting is is um, timing someone out completely, right? Like that's that's way too long for someone to make a better half time. Um, but yeah, so there's so there's a real question there of why it's taking so much longer. I'm guessing, well, a, a huge part of this is going to again be the data difference, right? 
um, the fact that outside the UK operators simply just won't have that same level of insight, won't have that same level of reliability in the data they're getting from public sources. So that makes the whole onboarding stage much more difficult full stop, right? Um, so here there's, here there's a, you're, you're trying to really do two things at once. You need to speed up your, your onboarding time, but you also need to really, really educate your customer base as to why, as to why it's taking so long, right? So an ID check here won't be, oh, okay, I'm taking your driver's license and checking it against like a nationalized database. It will be running far more deeper checks on it, and you know, obviously taking a lot longer time the same uh, to get that done. Um, and so, really, you're just trying to you're looking to to keep your customers there. You're looking to be as honest as you can with them, and explaining why that is taking so long to to really establish the trust element, to keep them engaged, and to keep them focused on the fact that eventually they will be able to get through. And another part of it as well is, as as we'll see, we'll see probably in the next couple of slides is customers customers tend to drop off outside of the uk for for two major reasons right one of them is their source of funds and the other one is their proof of identity and part of the reason for that drop off is good right so if you have questionable source of funds and people are self-selecting out that's probably going to be a slightly criminal element which you don't want to be doing business with anyway um however there are also so those who are just doing it for privacy reasons, and that, that was something that came back from some of the operators that we that we um, that we interviewed, they were saying that privacy was like a really big thing for a lot of their customer base. So really, again, you're just trying to explain that, you know, from a from a malicious standpoint. So things like GDPR, that you know, you're not going to be spamming them or scamming them with anything. You're going to be using this information for this one particular purpose, really getting it through there. Um, but yeah, so. Really, this this is this is like a, a data limitation, which which really needs to be addressed. Eh? Yeah, I mean, I mean, certainly from from when I used to work in in the book, is um, gamblers like the privacy. So um, yeah, getting them on board with a with a identification <laughs> process, uh, it, I would say, is definitely challenging. But um, I mean, I've got I've got a question. I mean, with with regards to this, is this where sort of like who use localization tools come in? Um, because knowing, knowing knowing which document to ask for in, in the different markets, I'm assuming that takes that sort of automates a lot of the time um, uh, of people having to phys uh, individually um, speak to uh, speak to potential clients, but because you're already automatically asking for the right documents, so that would that cut some of the cut, cut some of this time away. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the idea of who you is to minimise and minimise as much as possible the um, percentage of customers that, that agents have to manually interact with. And that's obviously you know, not, the, not really driven by saving operators' cost um, driver. That's really driven by just giving the best customer experience possible to, to pull as many of those customers through, 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 through the funnel. I mean, an, another one of the things that we do to... Uh, to um, to kind of reduce the time it takes to perform KYC is to give really good guidance through the journey, uh, as Darnham said earlier, to educate the user, explain what it is they have to do and why they have to do it, and keep them going with you know, through the journey with additional bits of guidance. And the, the Who You guidance has got kind of like two personas built into it. There's a click, click, click persona for the digital natives, what we call the straight through journey. People just, just keep clicking to get to the end of the journey and go through. And then perhaps there's a person that's a little bit more unsure, needs a bit more support and, and help and guidance, and they can go to the Journey Hub and get further tips and tricks about what they have to do to, to, to get over the line. Um, but the second thing we do is give uh, lots of nice real-time feedback during the journey. So the screen on the right, this is uh, an example of, um, of a screen that, that we'll present. Um, and as soon as the user gives us an image, whether it be a selfie image, an ID document image, uh, our tech will do a little triage of that image uh, and determine whether we can take it forward to perform the security checks on, on the image or if we're going to ask the user to give us a new one because there's something wrong with it. And then we'll give them some bespoke messaging to say, look, this is this is what you've done wrong. 
um, uh, here's here's what we need you to do instead. So the image on the, on the right, for example, saying, look, sorry, you know, you're going to need to retake it because part of the document is missing or obstructed. Make sure you've got all four corners. Make sure the text is is sharp and clear, and make sure nothing's obs nothing's obscuring the edges of the document. So that real time feedback helps. Uh, reduced amount of time for the user and obviously you know the, the, the shorter it is the easier it is and the shorter and easier it is the, the more the, the greater percentage of people will get get over the finishing line um, and then lastly we offer user outreach tools what we mean by that is text reminders and email reminders uh, that who you um, send out on behalf of the operator to, to remind the user to say hey look you know you signed up for your account early but you haven't completed KYC yet don't forget to click here and, and, and complete your KYC journey. Um, and our clients, they can they can change uh, the text in those SMSs, obviously constrained by uh, by message char character um, length. They can change uh, what it is they put in the email reminders. They can even upload their own custom HTML into those email reminders. So it's all those little edges, all those little things that add up to make a big difference to uh, to make it easier for the user to, to to get over the finishing line. Is is this kind of guidance and feedback then more important in the European markets given the dropout rate is higher and the 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 richness of the information that's out there is 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 a bit more shallow than it is in the UK. Yeah, absolutely, because you, you could argue that uh 75, 80 percent of UK users would go through a database check journey and not be asked to go forward. To the to the, the identity document section, whereas 100% of um, users in other countries uh, have to, yeah have to go through some kind of document validation process. Um, in Spain, for example, uh, if you as soon as you try and gamble more than X, I think it's 100 euros. Um, or if you try to withdraw, that's when you have to go through a document validation journey. Um, in Germany, it's mandatory uh, under the KJM the uh, you can shoot some median um, laws. Um, you have to uh, do that document validation for 100% of account creations. So yes, yeah, this kind of like guidance is more important in some countries than others, because in some countries and others, the ID document route is, is, is much more prevalent. Uh, okay, and then lastly, we ask the operators precisely where they're seeing um, uh, dropouts. Uh, so, Darlam, over to you to talk, talk us through these stats. Yeah, sure. These these stats are really interesting, right? Like, um, I think when we were talking to one of the uh, one of the operators, which you can and you can find the stat in the report, which you should definitely download. Plugging that right now. Um, <laughs> the address docs in the UK, like they tend to stick around ten percent, and that's that's kind of been the case for a long time, but internationally it's it's 30 to 40 percent dropout at that stage, which is just again an overwhelming increase. And part of that might be because uh, um, gamers, not gamers, players in um, in the, in the outside of the UK are are more private and they're a little bit more concerned around privacy issues. This is again where you can bring in issues like GDPR and talk to like the legal ramifications of keeping their data, how you use their data, and, and really making that sort of legislation work for you and that sort of regulatory um, binding work for you in a really positive way there, because you can you can really annul those fears. But it's also it's also about making sure that these um these source of funds and, and proof of identity checks are really robust. Because if you have a really robust check in place, and a really robust scan and journey in place, then you can also give back to your to your customers like real feedback as to why things may or may not have gone through. So rather than just saying, oh, rather than just a rejection point from the customer, from the not sorry, not from the customer, from the operator, you can say, oh, you know, the reason why we couldn't take this is because uh, this shared document is is out of, is out of date. So we we can't accept that. We need slightly more updated proof of funds, uh, source of funds, sorry. Or you know this this is this passport's going to expire in six months and we don't accept that we need something that's a bit more up to date. So just having that sort of like all these sort of boilerplate reasons which you know kind of guide your customers as to why as to why um, identity documents are accepted and why um, source of funds documents are accepted or rejected. It can it can really sort of uh, reduce the 
the fear and the rejection from their ends and and really make them realize that your company isn't just sort of messing around but you're you're looking for very specific information because you don't have the databases in those countries to fall back on right so i think having having that is um is a really powerful way of, of getting people to stay uh just to stick with your onboarding process where you don't have that data yeah i think with, really i think with the with the proof of source of funds thing you know this is yeah the, this is the hardest side of it. Yeah, we see that it's like it's the largest um, percentage of dropouts. Uh, yeah, the, the the pain point that the operators are suffering at the moment. Um, the way that who you tackles this, of course, is to um, extend the who you journey. So the first who you journey that a user goes through might be for an ID document or an ID document and and and, and a selfie. Um, but then later in their life, another who you journey can be triggered. The point at which um, they've reached um, certain um, affordability thresholds or risk thresholds, as defined by the operator, not, not, not by who you, and then this different who you journey can 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 be presented to them, whereby they have to upload um, a pay slip, a source of piece of a, a, some sort of source of wealth information instead. Um, and whilst this is relatively a low fi route, what it does do is allow the operator to do it at scale without agents having to do lots of outreach themselves. Um, and when the um, when the the user receives that the he request for the source of funds documentation, again it comes with all the reminders, all the chasing, all the user engagement, all the tips. Um, and in fact, what the agent can can then do is look at the document that comes back in the he client portal. And if they don't like it, if it's like too old um, or there's something that they're, they're not happy about, that they can press reject, type in a custom message back to the user. And the user receives a text back from the operator going, hey, thanks for submitting this. We're not happy with it because of X, Y, Z. Please, please, please do this instead. So it's, it's a bit of a lo-fi route. We're not validating these, these um, source of funds or source of wealth documents. Uh, but while, what we are doing is facilitating you know, the operator to gather them, gather them in a more automated fashion. So, um, so on that, uh, let's have so, a... Sorry, go on, guys. So, sorry, I was, just, I was just curious as to... Um, obviously, with the source of funds um, check being such a big, a big drop-off point, um, who decides when you implement those source of funds? Is it something that who you suggest to operators, or, or do operators themselves uh, make that decision depending on what what regulatory area they're in? Yeah, I think um, uh, the gambling commission or whoever is the the, the, the regulator. Uh, would be most displeased with the operator um, if they had someone like who you. Um, making those decisions. It's really down to the operator to understand their customers um, and to understand their customers' um, uh, income, their customers' demographics, their cu and ultimately their customers' affordability, um, and ultimately their customers' behaviour as well. So I think it's really down for the operator to define uh, what they constitute to be affordability triggers. And obviously, it all depends on what game the customer's playing, you know, what, what they've used to deposit, have they chased their losses, have they reversed a withdrawal? Uh, yeah, there's there's many many things in there that that, that the operator can use to define um, when affordability kicks in. So let's throw um, another poll out there. So how do you guys build your source of funds and source of wealth insight? Um, really interested in particular uh, to see what the take up of open banking is um, uh, in, in the sector. So um, over to you guys to, uh, to, 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 to vote on that. Oh, OK, interesting. Right, just allow it for a few more votes to come in. Okay, let's close that poll. Right, and share results. Okay, so um, in fact, I'm gonna leave it to you guys to 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 to, to co comment on this. But the thing that leaps out at me is that it's still a little bit old school. Customer email outreach is the most common means that the operators are using to get back out to customers and ask them for source of funds and source of wealth outreach as opposed to creating a digital journey but but guys what what, what do you think of, of these numbers i mean uh, um when i've seen the certainly in the uk the gambling commission 
when they've had to do their um uh should we say they've had to use the stick rather than the carrot and they've, uh, these settlements have been done and they, and they've broken down a lot of the uh, the failures of the uh, KLC and specifically the uh, anti money laundering um procedures it always seems to feel quite critical it's a you know because uh, the operator sent out three emails to check on source of funds but they were never followed up on um and th th those kind of things that uh, really kind of stick out in the reports that the gambling commission say that a lot of the time it's a lot about um a failure in the in the e email communications or at least to, f to follow them up and everything um and, and a suggestion that it's it's not enough anymore yeah <clears throat> yeah i find it really interesting because i kind of understand that the open banking uptake is quite low because i think there's a lot of there's a lot of issues with how open banking was rolled out in the UK anyway. Um, issues that I think the industry is very well aware of and they're being worked on by the Open Banking Commission anyway. But it's probably going to be, like you said, customer email reaches, it's very old school. And like uh, you said, Andy, it's not really enough anymore, according to the Gambling Commission. So I think it's really going to be a, a, an issue of blending a few of these options together, right? So maybe it should be send out a couple of emails. If nothing's followed up on, then you know humans make mistakes they're not necessarily going to follow up on that but maybe there should be an automated cutoff in place for those for those um for those particular accounts um, and maybe it's it's really about how these things can be blended together rather than relying on any particular one yeah that's fair point. Yeah, i mean, yeah. I mean I'll, I'll be honest with you when, when the gambling commission um strengthened uh, their uh, account rules it's probably two years ago now, but um, I'm com I completely lost with time given the COVID year that we've had. Um, <clears throat> I was a Paddy Power customer, and they were sending me emails to to you know update the data, and I just didn't want to. Um, and they cut me off eventually. Um, so, but if they'd have phoned me up, I'd have gone, oh, all right then, and and, and, and gone through the process. Um, I'm guessing the problem, the reason why they didn't, because they had to do so many <laughs> because of the impending deadline. Um, but, you know, so as I say, as a, as a customer, do you particularly like when you get an email, you're like, oh, I don't really want to scan a bunch of documents. I don't I don't want to make a bunch of attachments. I'm watching TV. I don't care about this right now. Yeah. And, and that, that, sure that, 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 that's the natural dropout, isn't it? So uh, mm -hmm. um, in terms of inconvenience, yeah. essentially. You know, and, and it's sensitive, you know, let's not dress it up. It's information that potentially uh, players would like to keep close to the chest. So it's trying to make that as easy and accessible as possible to get that information to the operator. Um, and I, I totally agree with Dan, and I think it'll, they'll, they'll you know, be a blend of the two um, going forward. Open banking was a trust element there or trust issue potentially. Um, so you know i think it's a marriage a happy marriage of, of of you know tech that allows easy collection and easy process for the, the player to go through but indeed that you know potential manual element um for, from a team who can you know, give that reassurance and trust and follow up where needed <clears throat> yeah so in terms of making it making kyc easy and accessible um so what we often do on, on on these webinars is do a quick demo of the who you journey but you know yeah most people know what know know what the who you journey looks and feels like by now so what we're going to do today um uh tori if that's okay with you uh, is ask you to share your screen and just um kind of like show today's delegates a little bit underneath the bonnet of who you and how just how easy it is to and how accessible it is to make a new journey configure options change settings without having um, an army of developers um, by, by their side. So bear with me for one second and I'm going to pass you the control. Marvellous, thank you Dave. And I can figure out how. <laughs> <laughs> right, you're the, uh, you should have some pop up on your screen now, Tori. Yes, perfect. Marvellous, hopefully. That's showing. Can you see my uh, dashboard shout if you can't? Yep, yep, um, got it. That's good. Brilliant, thank you. Um, so yeah, hi, hi everyone. Um, it's quite nice to, to not be taking you through a generic demo flow actually, um, because it's perhaps something 
that's a little bit more interesting. Um, so this this is a will be a quick behind the scenes view as Dave just just mentioned to basically show you some of the some of the good stuff uh, that we've got under the bonnet. Um, who's got tools in there which basically help to automate more manual tasks. So um, you know, time savers and then equally I'm going to talk to some of the um, things you can do with configuration and customization as well within the platform um, to create different flows to you know, reflect different brands, your, your market uh, operations and, and regulations, and then equally the different types of plays that you have as well um, and the risk processes that they might need to go through. So I will jump into the settings part of the uh, platform, which ordinarily isn't the most exciting, one would argue. However, this is where we get to um, some, of the, some of the good stuff. So if I just click on our general settings here and scroll down. Now, one, one example of um, where we can you know, further kind of automate perhaps those tasks that come back to customer success teams um, would be um, business rules here. So you can see some examples that we've got whereby we can automate um, some of those processes. And, and it's just plugging in an extra layer that we are looking for um, when players are going through a KYC flow. So we've got a rule here to reject expired proof of identity documents. You can apply a catch-all rule to all identity documents or segment it by type as well. So completely up to you. And you can add you know, others so you might want um, that a passport is within six months validity but um, you know you might apply a different rule for driver's license so that flexibility is there same thing with address um, documents down here um, we can again apply one rule to bank statements you might have a three month rule in which case we would just collect a select and, and then apply a three months rule in there uh, tax documents you know given council tax for example tend to be issued every 12 months, you, know, you might want to have a slightly more leniency on that type of um, proof of address document. So there's some examples, um, to be passports as well. And it's just a quick click, click and save. And then that rule is then active and it's filtering down those documents that otherwise um, would just come through to you. You would you know, hopefully pick it up as part of your checks and then have to reach back out to the player. So it's just minimising that stickiness in the process and that review queue um, associated as well. Uh, another point, so Dave mentioned that we have outreach capabilities um, to, to players that come through the HE process. So just to talk to that, we have an area which allows us to enable reminders. Um, we will keep a HE you request or player session open for up to two weeks and you are able to engage with that player at regular intervals to try um, and get them to you know, re-engage with the process um, if they've perhaps started uploading an ID document in the UK for example and they're missing an address document you might want to send them a, a reminder just to let them know um, and what we're going to do at that point is send them a link which is going to throw them back into the HUU journey exactly at the point at which they left so it's not a case of oh i've started i can't find you know, a bank statement or try to remember my password for online banking which is usually myself um so we can just re-engage with them at that point and we know we've got the, the id document there so they just need to find and upload their address document so that's um that's something again it's a click and it's um and it's saving so that type of change is it's pretty instant um and that was uh, something I wanted to flag. Moving down, I'm just going to click on our, our caution rules areas. So um, what you're seeing here are a few instances and or ever growing um, instances which we can look for and which we can apply throughout a player journey to create a flag for you as the operator um, so that you're going to get an alert or an exclamation mark within the review queue in, in the results area. So a couple of good examples which we see used a lot across the client base would be finding an alert if, if any name aliases are found. So again, I'm just going to click it on there. Same thing with address. If they've gone through a registration form in the UK 
and indeed the address that we find on our proof of address document is different, we want to know about that as well. Same thing with proof of address if it's older than, you know, let's say, three months, hence we the rule of thumb. Um, so there's a whole host here which you can uh, switch on, you know, age 18. And what's the point of this? Well, again, it's just trying to minimise the amount of time or, or engagement that you have to uh, carry out with players to get documents that fulfil the needs um, of the regulation and, and of your KYC requirements or EDD requirements as well. So it's just trying to trying to help uh, you guys out um, and essentially potentially alert you to um, important um, activity as well. So that's another area which we see is um, you know a great value add um, across our, our client base. And then another and perhaps the final one for today, given that I could talk about this all day, <laughs> is um, our customization area. So this this is really the the jewel in the crown at Who You. Um, it's it's a space where um, you get to um, plug in your CSS. Um, we can you know, manipulate colors, logos, um, as well as icons, um, font families we can put in, into this as well. And essentially you can create custom, custom flows by brand. So, for example, a, a lot of our, our clients have multiple brands across multiple jurisdictions. So rather than ask the dev team, you know, if you're launching a new brand, for example, um, rather than have to get them to plug in you know, the APIs, put some layer some UX all over it, um, and generally engage in a time, you know, time and time and costly process, um, you can just list them into here and the brand is you know, configured again, a few clicks and, and, and it's done. Loading your logo in is similarly very easy. Um, and all of that customization will flow through into the email and SMS reminders that we, we've already spoken about. So I've got a fictitious brand here called River Esports. You can see how some of that branding is flowing through. Um, and similarly, again, you know, that pulls through to emails and SMSs so that if I have a, a drop off or any point of drop off, which we've, we've spoken about, it happens, unfortunately. <laughs> so so let's let's look at how we re-engage that player, because it might just be that they, as I said, they've forgotten where a document is, for example, if, you know, they started and not, and not completed. So we've got examples of reminders in there um, you can use as, as templates. Um, and there it is, some of our, our languages as well. Um, I can load that up and you can customise that message. So it's coming through from your brand in a nice, um, a nice tailored message which speaks to, speaks to the player. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot we can do in essence and it's a bit of a whirlwind tool, so apologies, but hopefully that's, that's giving you a, a flavour about how we can um, you know, customise and configure behind the scenes. Yeah, that, that was really good, Tori. Thank, thank you so much. And the aim of that is just to show that um, simple marketeers like me can use this platform. It's not that you have to have um, an army of developers or BAs to be able to create or build or edit or add um, elements to a, to, 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 to a Who You journey. So um, I think we'd better go to questions because we're running, uh, we're pretty running out of time. It's almost the top of the hour. Uh, so, um, guys, if you do have any questions, please um, throw them in through. Uh, through the um, uh, through the through the control panel, uh, let me uh, share my screen again. Uh, Tori, I think you might stop sharing for me to share screen. Actually, um. I hand it back to you, Dave. I think that's uh... great. Thanks. <laughs> Give me one second. Sorry, that was my daughter <laughs> hammering on the door. I haven't got caught in the rain outside, but she's OK, everybody, just just in case. Right. So um, uh, please do throw your questions in uh, through the go to through the um, through the control panel. Um, and we have um, a question in from uh, from Ben. Um, are the KYC pass rates from the survey based off um, uh, one plus one or two plus two? Um, I think the answer is going to be one plus one because it was um, all about the age verification at points of um, uh, point point of um, uh, point of first deposit or sign up. Um, but I don't actually know um, in, in all truthfulness. We had a third party um, conduct the research for us, 
uh, with the representative sample of the, of the operators so that they could get the data and, and we would get it anonymized. So we wouldn't know which, op which operator's data uh, was, was whose. Um, uh, Laura, uh, yeah, absolutely. We'll make sure that, uh, that we send, send them uh, the recording out so you can, so you can see it. Uh, Angel, uh, you've asked uh, what is considered um, a small, medium, large gambling operator. So it's based on monthly volume thresholds. Um, I don't recall exactly what the demarcations were, but we'll reach out to you uh, and, and let you know. Uh, we also have um, a question saying what countries uh, does, does the WHO document validation process work for? Um, so happy to report um, that works for countries all over the world. Uh, based on uh, on the different document formats, um, and we can accommodate uh, identity val document validation for any country in the world. Uh, and oh, and Angel, that's you asking this, this, um, the, the, the same question again. So uh, we're pretty much out of time for today. I'm not going to keep you guys any more. Um, if you do have any questions, um, please um, do email them into us, um, and we will make sure we can answer for them answer them for you. So just want to thank um, today's panellists. Um, Tori, thanks for the great um, uh, whirlwind tour of the Who You Client portal. Um, Andy, thanks for your uh, your probing questions as ever. My pleasure. Um, and uh, that concludes today's webinar, so we can all get, get ready for our four o'clock meetings, uh, whatever that might be. So uh, thank you very much, guys. Um, stay safe and have, have a nice afternoon. Bye-bye. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. -bye. Thanks. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.